The X-Files, one of TV's most popular science fiction series with a recent reboot, follows the adventures of agents Mulder and Scully as they unravel a plot for global domination by aliens with the US government's help. Well, help might be too strong of a word. In reality, the US government realizes that it's completely powerless to stop the aliens' plans, and instead attempts to go along with them in order to secure a better place for itself in the new alien-friendly world order, while also secretly trying to undermine said alien plans. It's a cloak and dagger show that explores the very fringes of real science and has no shortage of monsters. Yet, you may be surprised to learn that the real life FBI and CIA also have their very own, very real X Files. The Flying Saucer Swindler Silas M. Newton made a small fortune for himself in the first half of the 20th century thanks to his career in oil and natural gas. One of the hardest, most expensive parts of the oil business, however, is the exploration phase, with companies spending tens of millions of dollars just to find a suitable oil field to drill into. In the 1950s, though, Mr. Newton came up with a brilliant answer, and it might have been based on flying saucer technology. In 1950, the world was on fire with news of flying saucers. Just three years earlier, a mysterious crash in Roswell, New Mexico led to military officials making the shocking claim that a flying saucer from another world had been recovered. Just days later, though, the military reversed its statement, claiming no such saucer had crashed and instead a weather balloon had been recovered. The world wasn't buying it, and soon news of UFOs and alien bodies being recovered by the US government were all the rage. Then a bombshell announcement hit newspapers all across the US. Scientists says flying saucer pilots will land within a year. Little men in saucer do soon to explore Earth, Savant says. Geophysicist sees saucers landing soon, thinks pilots from other planet about ready to visit Earth. The story spread like wildfire fueled along with the credibility of the man behind the claims, a professional scientist. Only there was one problem. The scientist or geophysicist, as some papers called him, was none other than oil man Silas M. Newton, who definitely had no formal scientific training. Instead, given his knowledge of the oil business, it seems that one of the newspapers gave Mr. Newton an honorary degree and the rest sort of ran with it. As the story evolved, it was claimed that the predictions came from a real scientist named Dr. G, whom Newton was friends with. The scientist also claimed that the saucers flew using magnetic propulsion, utilizing the Earth's magnetic field to zoom around. Newton soon took things a step further and claimed that the same technology flying saucers were using he had learned to harness in a special device that could be used to detect oil. Unfortunately for Mr. Newton, the story had reached the desk of one J. Edgar Hoover, who, when he wasn't busy secretly cross-dressing or trying to dismantle the civil rights movement, occasionally took the time to do his job and investigate crime. Newton and his device were exposed as a hoax by the FBI, and Newton would end up facing prosecution for his elaborate flying saucer scam. Or at least that's the official story. After all, if Newton really had discovered world-changing tech based on flying saucers, surely the powers that be wouldn't want him to make it available on the free market. Our next X-File comes from the CIA and could truly have been out of this world. The Soviet UFO Incident July 1952 in the CIA station in West Germany receives a stunning report. A local may have just inadvertently stumbled upon a secret Soviet craft in the woods on the American-controlled West German countryside. The man is brought in for questioning as agents immediately move out to verify his story. The man is a 46-year-old German from East Germany and a former mayor, Oskar Linke. Linke has only just recently escaped from East Germany along with his wife and six children, and on the day in question is on his way home with his daughter when the tire on his motorcycle blows out. Unable to repair it, he and his daughter walk on foot to the nearest town, when suddenly his daughter points out something strange near the trees about 140 meters away from them, catching a glimpse of… something. Linka tells his daughter to wait and moves closer to get a better look. Once he's about 55 meters away, he spots what appears to be two men dressed in shiny metallic clothing, investigating something on the ground. Curious, Linka approaches the men and gets within 10 meters when he suddenly spots a large object on the other side of a small fence. The object appears to be a craft of some sort, something like a flying frying pan and about 13 to 15 meters in diameter. The top of the object is tapered so as to become a large conical tower. It was like nothing Linka or anyone else on this earth for that matter had ever seen. At that moment, Linka's daughter calls out to him, and the men in metallic suits whip around and realize they're being watched. They immediately climb inside the strange craft and disappear inside. The object begins to glow and rise into the air with a loud whistling sound, 
flames shooting out of the bottom of it as it lifts up and away over the trees. Lincoln was initially terrified that he'd stumbled across a secret Soviet craft, as he recalled in his testimony to CIA agents. He had known of people in East Germany that the Soviets had placed on travel restrictions for accidentally knowing too much. The CIA investigation into the matter revealed that at the exact same time as Linka's sighting, many other people in the area reported seeing a falling star-like object in the sky, with one shepherd noting that he had seen what he thought was a comet moving at a very low altitude over the forests. While this X-file is declassified, what's most telling is that the CIA's official conclusions on the matter are not, only the initial report. Whatever the CIA discovered after investigating the story and its conclusions on the origin of this mysterious craft remain to this day unknown. FBI's X-ray vision The 50s were apparently a pretty crazy time because our next X-file also comes from the 1950s. In 1957, two individuals from the federal government, whose names remain redacted in declassified papers, attended an event hosted by a Mr. William Foose at the American Legion headquarters in Washington, D.C. Mr. Foose made an extraordinary claim. He could teach the blind to see using extrasensory perception. At the demonstration, Mr. Foose used his own daughter, whom he'd blindfolded, and wowed the audience as she was able to read from newspapers brought by reporters, the Bible, and various other bits of literature. What's more, Mr. Foose's daughter was able to distinguish color and even move around the room without bumping into objects. After the demonstration was over, the two government agents questioned Mr. Foose privately, who revealed that he could teach the technique to others, that with some work, even greater feats could be accomplished, such as seeing through walls or into envelopes. The agents were so impressed by the event that they recommended the FBI look into Mr. Foose, citing the obvious benefits his abilities could be in counterintelligence and criminal investigation. What followed was a firestorm of federal, military, and even CIA investigation into Mr. Foose and others like him. While the demonstration by Mr. Foose's daughter was believed to be genuine, and no trickery could be determined by the agents who witnessed it, another demonstration by Mr. Foose's son, where he attempted to determine what specific card a face-down playing card was, saw only a 50% success rate, which was only a little bit better than when he attempted the same feat without a blindfold on. Officially, while not disproving Mr. Foose's abilities, the declassified FBI files show that they recommended the government not pursue Mr. Foose as a national security asset. However, what may be the most revealing about these files is one single line in one of the reports which states, the actuality of extrasensory perception has long been recognized, though not to the degree of perfection claimed by Mr. Foose. Perhaps Mr. Foose was officially discredited, so that officially he could work for the US government as an extrasensory spy, a phenomenon the FBI seemed to acknowledge was possible. Our next X-File comes from the CIA, which seems to reach some startling conclusions about what's really flying around in our skies. Flying Saucer Showdown in the Congo In the early 1950s, the threat of atomic war was very real, and both the US and the Soviet Union took security of its precious uranium mines extremely seriously. That's why when two UFOs appeared over a uranium mine in the Belgian Congo, the CIA immediately leapt into action. For the start of its nuclear program, the US sourced most of its uranium from mines in Belgian-controlled Congo, naturally leading to a CIA presence in the region. The threat of espionage or sabotage by Soviet agents was all too real, though the CIA desk in the Congo could have never expected a threat from outer space. On an unspecified day in 1952, two flying disks made an appearance over uranium mines over the southern Congo in the Elizabethville district. The disks were witnessed by dozens of observers on the ground and were seen to glide across the sky in elegant curves and change positions so frequently that from below they were seen as plates, ovals, and sometimes just lines as they turned edge on to the ground observers. Suddenly, before the shocked onlookers, the disks came to a complete stop and a hissing and buzzing sound was heard as the disks flew off in a zigzag flight toward the northeast. A Belgian military officer, identified as Commander Pierre, hopped onto a fighter plane and set off in immediate pursuit, taking off from a nearby airfield. He managed to come within 120 meters of one of the disks, estimating that the saucer had a diameter of 12 to 15 meters and was shaped like a discus. It had an inner core which seems to remain completely still while the outer part of the craft spun at incredible speed, being completely veiled in flame. Both crafts seemed to be constructed out of aluminum-like material. The UFOs flew together in an extremely precise manner, though Commander Pierre could not believe that the disks were manned as that incredible heat and sudden acceleration and deceleration would have no doubt killed any human occupant. The disks could make changes in elevation as great as 1,000 meters in just a matter of seconds, 
and they would often shoot down to skim just 20 meters above the tree line. Finally, the discs took off with a loud whistling sound at an estimated speed of 1,500 kilometers per hour, leaving Commander Pierre completely in the dust. Commander Pierre and his report were thoroughly investigated by the CIA, which concluded that Pierre was considered an extremely dependable officer and a well-trained and experienced pilot. While no further conclusions can be gleaned from the declassified document, one line at the end of the report clearly raises a lot of eyebrows. He gave a detailed report to his superiors, which strangely enough, in many respects agreed with various results of research. Clearly, the CIA was inclined to believe Commander Pierre's statement on the flying saucers and his reported observations, as they seemed to closely match other eyewitness accounts investigated by CIA agents. Who was really flying those disks though we may never know, as any further conclusions remain classified. Ready for more out of this world stuff? Watch Iran military intercepts alien UFO, or watch this other video instead.